today on the Self Smarter Podcast. Basically what the working genius is, is it helps organizations place people in the right seat by assessing like six different types of geniuses that are necessary to get something done. Okay. That could be work or like I said, any number of things. And what, what these six geniuses, what it tells us all is that we basically possess some aspect of all of the geniuses, but at the same time, not all of these geniuses, some of these geniuses bring us great joy and energy while others can frustrate or drain us. And so when we know that about ourselves and others, we can definitely put ourselves in a in more of a winning position relative to where we can bring our energy to get something done. Hi, we're Danelle and Megan, the hosts of this conversation-centric podcast for leaders seeking to be better every day. Whether you choose to be a leader in the workplace, at home, or in your community, we believe the most effective leaders are equipped to not only be self-starters, but self-smarter. Hello, and welcome to Self Smarter. I'm Megan, and this is my friend and co-host, Danelle. Hello, everyone. Okay, we're going to kick off a little bit differently today. Okay. We usually kick off in surprise. <laughs> usually we kick off with something a little fun, but I want to touch on this because it's special. Okay. It's sweet. And I think it's good for you to share with our listeners what's really going on. Okay. So you went to New York, you got Mackie Payton settled back in her apartment. Mm-hmm. And you and Mackie decided to do something very special together while you were in New York. Would you mind sharing that with us? Yeah. Uh, so while Mackie was, unfortunately, as a family, we, fortunately, as a family, we had had the pleasure of being rescued by uh, our fur baby, Shelby Ray, 12 years ago. And she, again, we had an amazing 12-year run with her, but she became very sick. And we, we and there was no way to, she, anyway, we, as a family, we ended up putting her to rest when Mackie got back from studying abroad. And so we, when Mackie and I were in New York, we decided to get tattoos to honor her and a little, they're a little, they're small. <laughs> we didn't get all tatted up with, yeah. I would have, I could have put her everywhere. But um, anyway, it was just a nice way for us to, to honor Shelby and all the love and joy that she brought to us. And I, and for a lot of you listening, you probably know about this. And I just want to say it's just that we've been, the outpouring of support and love for that little angel that walked to her own beat has just been overwhelming and, and wonderful. So I appreciate you bringing that up so I could have a chance to thank a lot of our listeners who know about that and probably a, a, all of the listeners who could probably empathize with, with the loss of a pet. It's, it's, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a lot, but at the same time, just when we think about the joy that they bring us, I wouldn't want to ever miss out on that. So yeah, it's, um, Mac and I had a great time doing our little, uh, our little tattoos, Tribute. little tributes. Yeah, it was real special. And it was real special too, because the people in Soho where we had it done, they were really into it. And so it's just, I don't know, it was good energy, very good energy. Yeah. And, and again, lots of tears of happiness. So it was good. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, <laughs> well, it's, it's, I don't know that I want to thank you for <laughs> putting that on me, but I did want, I, I do, I do. I, I do appreciate the opportunity to thank everyone who's been so supportive and all the messages and calls and cards and just, well, and I want to thank you for, and I, you know, people who know, you know, that you loved this animal and mm-hmm. she was a part of the family. She was a part of the business. I argue she was an animal. I know. Honestly. I know. <laughs> She's a human. I don't know why you call her an animal. Um, but in fact, she was a part of all of our lives here yes. at DMA, and mm-hmm. so we're all going to miss her very, yes. very much. So I, we will share a picture, if that's okay with you, yes. of Danelle's tattoo, um, just her little um, mark and tribute to Shelby Ray on our Instagram stories for you to see. Yeah. And um, we're just all so sorry, Danelle. Thank you. Okay, before we jump into our topic today, which is mm-hmm. Working Genius, let's hop to quick commercial. Okay. Before we start... Let me just say that I don't know how we'd make it a day at our company without the help of our trusty IT services partner. Moby Systems has been our IT partner for years, and they keep us connected when computers crash and networks go haywire. 
The team at Moby is super helpful and understanding of people who don't know what the heck to do when equipment goes south. What I know for sure is that without them, we wouldn't be able to run our business as seamlessly as we do. With Moby Systems in your corner, you have peace of mind that they keep an eye on your company and its IT assets. We're offering our listeners a huge bonus to sign up with Moby Systems. Here's the deal. Our listeners will get their first month's service absolutely free, along with additional goodies. For more information, please visit mobysystems.com. That's M-O-B-E systems.com. And be sure to mention Self Smarter for your first month free. All right. So the working genius yes. is a relatively new assessment. If you compare it to like Myers-Briggs or the Enneagram. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. it's new. I would say it's two to three years old. They've been working on it for the last two years. Yeah. yeah. So people who are listening mm-hmm. right now may have not heard of it. I would expect that most haven't. Okay. So thank you if you saw the title and you decided to listen anyway, because I think it's an an invaluable tool that can bring a lot of um, improvements to organizations and groups. Yeah. And you've said before, we're an organization and a culture of learning about ourselves and getting self smarter. Correct. Part of that journey is dabbling quite frankly in assessments, personality assessments, Mm -hmm. whatever, to be able to figure out what our different styles are, and especially as it uh, it relates to work. So tell us, because the working genius is very specific to work. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about it? It's very specific to work, and it's it's more specific to how things get done. So it could okay. be in the workplace, or it could be in a family, or it could okay. be in a, a sports team. It could be in any number of ways. But the working genius is from one of our favorites, Patrick Lencioni. Mm-hmm who brought us the five dysfunctions of a team and the ideal team player. We have a previous episode on that. Two very critical books and then basically teachings that we use in our organization. So when they announced that they were going to do this working genius, we paid attention. And so we were, we've kind of bought in early on on this journey. And so basically what the working genius is, is it helps organizations place people in the right seat by assessing like six different types of geniuses that are necessary to get something done. Okay. That could be work or like I said, any number of things. And what what these six geniuses, what it tells us all is that we basically possess some aspect of all of the geniuses. But At the same time, not all of these geniuses, some of these geniuses bring us great joy and energy while others can frustrate or drain us. And so when we know that about ourselves and others, we can definitely put ourselves in in more of a winning position relative to where we can bring our energy to get something done. And so that's why I I, I think it's, it's an incredible assessment. The other thing is if you're listening and you want to pause and go ahead and take the test, or, or go ahead and listen to the podcast and take it afterwards. But the thing I want you to know about this assessment is it's 10 minutes. Yeah, easy. Easy, 42 questions, and it costs $25. And there's, I found promo codes out there. So when I bought it for the company, oh, there's um, promo codes. But it's been around now for a while, so I'm not sure if those still exist. If that, that was something for the early adopters that they were offering. But what I also like about it, when you listen to Patrick talk about how they came across or why they created this, they almost stumbled upon it. So Patrick Lencioni, he's definitely an author, but he is also the, the founder and CEO of The Table Group. And The Table Group is a consulting firm that works with organizations of all sizes, but some of the larger ones that you've heard of, like Southwest Airlines, and Mm -hmm. the list goes on and on. And so what they were trying to do is to find something that was basically helpful beyond the Myers-Briggs. They were looking for assessment that that went beyond personality types. And so what he says is that they wanted to create a tool that had more utility, something that would help growing businesses understand the unique set of geniuses that all teams possess. And so the individuals on these teams and when I, and I think the key is utility, meaning how, you know, how are we driven to get something done? And so then what they started to do is to really think about, let's just say a project, for instance, from start to finish, what, what is necessary to make that happen in groups of individuals working. So that's the genesis of the working genius. And, and I like the idea of thinking through that, yes, we possess these 
geniuses, but not all of them bring us joy or energy. And at the same time, not all of them frustrate and, and drain us. So that's so it's like one of those things where you're in a meeting and you see somebody light up and mm -hmm. suddenly they're really energetic and bringing all this glory to the discussion or behind a desk even, mm -hmm. but it's discovering what people and when people are really motivated to finish that job. So right. we're going to talk, you said there are six types. You're going to talk about the six types, but yes. something that I want our listeners to be aware of is that the acronym for it is widget. Correct. So just keep that in mind. So Danielle, will you walk us through the six geniuses? Yeah. And so the thing to remember again about the six geniuses, it's our natural gifts. So we possess these naturally. Okay. And so that doesn't mean that we can't consciously work on one that may not be our, our super genius, but it's a natural gift. So I want you to kind of think about it in that context. But the, again, as Megan said, widget. So you starting with the W. So the first genius is wonder. And these people see potential. They, they, they spend time and ponder pondering ideas. The next is invention. So the I, and these are people who see ideas and discernment. These geniuses, they assess ideas. G galvanizing. These are the people who rally others to act on ideas. And then enablement, these geniuses bring ideas to life. And then last in the acronym, definitely not last in terms of importance, but no. tenacity. And these are the uh, geniuses that bring ideas to completion. And all I can say is God bless those people. God bless them. Yeah, because I that's my least of my geniuses. So those are the six uh, geniuses, wonder, invention, discernment, galvanizing, enablement, and tenacity. And like I said, and like Megan mentioned, this spells widget. And the, what's important about the acronym is that it's, it's the acronym is organized in phases and the phases is literally how work gets done. Okay. In other words, so phase one is ideation. And that's where the geniuses of wonder and invention reside. And that's where their power comes um, into the project. And so phase two is activation. So discernment and galvanizing. And those, those are where those geniuses reside. And then phase three is implementation. So enablement and tenacity. And that's important as we walk through these. And we're going to dive into each of the geniuses. But if you think about something from start to finish, yeah, there's, there's an ideation phase where it's what's missing here and or okay here's a solution for what might be missing or what could be better and then we go into activation we need geniuses that can discern wait is this the right way or is there you know is is this something we really need that needs to be fixed or is it just something that needs to be tweaked then you have the galvanizers and those are the folks that really start to rally people around what needs to be done. And then we go into phase three into implementation. And that's where enablement and tenacity, those geniuses are necessary to actually get, get the, there. get, get us, get us across the finish line. So, um, the other thing that I, I think is important about the test, again, as you're getting oriented to how this particular assessment works, once you take the test, you, you receive your scores immediately, which I love that too. And your six types of geniuses are broken down into three categories. So your first two, those are your geniuses. And, and so like what you're the best at. Oh yeah. What you likely, what you like to do, what brings you energy. It's what you're uniquely gifted at. Okay. So those are your first two. And then you, then on the opposite end of the spectrum, it's your working frustration. So the, the bottom two of where you scored, it's, you know, these are things that you're, that are not naturally energizing to you. They can be draining and you can be kind of uniquely poor at these particular geniuses. And then, so the two in the middle are what they refer to as your working competency. Okay. Meaning you likely do them well, but they necessarily don't bring you tons of joy or energy. So when you're thinking again, when you get your results, you'll, you'll be scored on all six in, in all six categories of genius. But at the same time, the top two, those, those are the things that bring you joy. And it's interesting when I've obviously putting our team through it and, and having colleagues and I know other companies that we've worked with have, have gone through this same exercise. It's so 
rewarding when you are validated that no wonder and we'll, we'll, we'll go into some examples on that, but it, it, it is very clear. It's very seldom is it a big surprise to individuals when they realize what their working genius is and what their working frustrations are. And so, I mean, I, mine was so spot on and I know my test results were so spot on for you, someone who's had to work alongside me for over 15 years. So I, that's what I love about the test. And I, and again, we're, we're giving you a lot of detail about it, but it, it is something very easy to adopt and understand. So I want to make sure that you're hearing that piece of it. And what I also love about it and what it has done for our company, and we'll talk about that more in a minute, but it elevates the diversity in the work that we do. Mm-hmm. And because it brings diversity around our natural gifts, meaning it's it's okay to have someone who has a genius of wonder and it's okay for you know someone else to possess this incredible genius of tenacity but when you don't necessarily know that that's what, what's at play it's easy for judgment and you know for us to stumble around well why doesn't this person ever get anything done and we'll we'll unpack that in just a sec but yeah i really love this part the the diversity in our natural gifts and elevating that because you said it earlier you mentioned the word this helps us just defining it helps us celebrate that about one another mm-hmm. so i'm not going to judge you for being a wonder you know being a person that brings a lot of big ideas because mm-hmm. i know that you need me and i need you in order to move things forward Yes, it, because if you think about it, it's we're, we're really putting our, when we understand it and when we know that about ourselves and yeah. we know that about others, we can use these gifts right. and we can work in, in such more harmony together. I mean, if you think about an orchestra, you don't, yeah. and all the different types of geniuses that, that, that make that come to life. And so, and, and as I mentioned, when we're not aware of the geniuses, it's easy for judgment to come into play. And what that sounds like is, oh, Jane doesn't do that well because she doesn't care as much as I do. But in reality, it's just probably not what her gift is. Right. And so I, I like this assessment for us because it, it, it can help us focus on bringing people's, what they're naturally, what naturally brings them joy more so to the table. Now, what I want to do is I want to have a disclaimer here. Okay. Just because we don't possess a working genius of one of the six, like if they're in our working frustration, that doesn't mean that we're not going to, going to have to do that at some point. Yeah, no, for sure. And yeah. we'll, t- we'll give an example of, of that with me here in a sec. And what I love that pa- Patrick Lencioni, what he says about this assessment is he says, far too many people in the world suffer needlessly because they don't understand their personal areas of working genius. As a result, they don't do the kind of work that gives them joy and energy. They end up in jobs and projects that are draining and demoralizing. Now he's being very, you know, he's, he's, he's throwing a big blanket there. Like he's casting a big net, I should say. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if you think about, you know, people who work at this company, we've already determined a couple of things about them if they're in, in you know, part of this team. Mm-hmm. We know that they want to do marketing work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I so that so. that's part of it, right? <laughs> but we also know that they are hungry, humble, smart. So we talk about that on Ideal Team Player because that's how we recruit. And when we know what their working genius is, then what we can do is put them in positions or in relative to projects or types of work that where they can use their genius immediately, but then at the same time, we can also help them hone their working competencies That's right. and potentially, and support them most certainly relative to their working frustrations. frustrations. Yeah. Because what we ultimately want is we want to be a little bit more well-rounded, Yes, at least from a conscientious standpoint. Yes. And then we can use each other in a way relative to doing the best possible work we can do around here on behalf of our clients by utilizing these geniuses and avoiding the judgment that comes along with they don't, they're not fulfilled in the same way that I'm fulfilled. Right. And so that's, that's what I love it. I do too. And I think, you know, next, what we ought to do is if you could just tell us a little bit more about the six 
because that's where our our listeners, those mm-hmm. of you that are listening, you might see yourselves or find yourselves in some yep. of these descriptions. Yes, yes. And so, okay, so let me start off again, starting with the genius of wonder. It, the these geniuses possess possess the natural gift of pondering the possibility of the greater potential and opportunity in any given situation. Does that mean that you sit around like <laughs> in the pondering face? <laughs> Fingers on face. Fingers, yeah, like if you could think mm. of the thinker, yeah, the that thinker. that would be their image. That's what the wanderers do, and and you know the, these geniuses, they they're very good at noticing when something is missing or wrong in a particular scenario, and they definitely love ambu- ambiguity. Ambu, God, I can't say that word. Ambiguity. Amb- thank you. <laughs> Gosh, that was a little tongue. Twi- <laughs> a little tongue twister. <laughs> And their motto is, let's think about it. I love that. The motto. So again, yeah. the great Pondors. And then we move into the uh, genius of invention. And their natural gifts are of creating original and novel ideas and solutions. Love that. So the wanderers are thinking about things. They're identifying where the inventors come in and say, well, here's a solution to that. And so they're great at new ideas, creation of things, and the, especially from a blank slate. Mm-hmm. And so... I would have thought they were the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I could have easily, if I would have just read a, looked at those words or looked at those particular geniuses, I could have seen how they are the same, but they are not the same. And they are not the same. And I clearly understand that now. And then what's interesting too about the, you know, the gift of invention is timing is key. And so we have to understand that, okay, now it's time to get something done. And so Those of us who possess the genius of invention, we can come up with ideas all day long, and that's where we'll stay. At some point, we need our discerners to come in and and, and, kind of hone it. Yeah, and galvanize us to say, okay, now it's time to move out of the idea phase into the let's start (laughs) the movement phase. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. So, and the motto for the um, genius of invention is let's figure it out. So, again, wanderers, let's think about it invention now we're let's figure it out so then we move into the activation phase of how work gets done and that brings us to the genius of discernment and they have the natural gift of intuitively and instinctively evaluating the ideas and situations that were brought to them and so it's not as easy and patrick talks about this he says it's not as easy to describe this genius because it's not technical yeah. It's not an easy skill because it's an instinct mm-hmm. or a judgment. And you know this because this is one of your geniuses, mm-hmm. but it's an internal ability to recognize when something is right on or something is just off with this idea that that's been presented. And they are, um, they are very good at, at bridging the gap between invention and then actually getting something done. So it's a necessary step. And their motto is let's do this or let's not do this. So Mm -hmm. I think that's why we've probably made an incredible team through the years, not knowing what our geniuses were because I was spending so much time thinking about things, creating things and, or ideas, Mm -hmm. not the things themselves, but the ideas. And you'd be like, well, Mm -hmm. Maybe that's not exactly the <laughs> right time. We still do that. So then we move into the genius of galvanizing, which is the natural gift to be able to rally, inspire, and organize others to take action. Yeah, I love these and, people. Yes, absolutely. And it's one of the most noticeable. You can see the galvanizers. Yes. They're, they're, they're the cheerleaders. And But it's also per the table group, the, the folks who created this with Patrick, is that it's one of the most scarce of all the geniuses. Yeah, that's and that's true. When we look at the map that we created for our company, mapping out all of our geniuses, it's one of the most scarce that we have in the organization. And the galvanizers, their their motto is let's move forward. So they want to get things moving. And then we move into the third phase, which is implementation. And that uh, starts with the genius of enablement. And their natural gift, these enablers are providing, their natural gift is to provide encouragement and assistance for an idea or project. And so it, this is also a critical part of the process of getting anything done effectively, but it's also rare. And it's also a no, it's about knowing when it's time to come alongside someone and support and encourage others. And this this particular geniuses, they are the enablers are most commonly deemed as the MVP. So if you think about it, they're the ones that come in and say, okay, I know what needs to be done. 
and I'm going to support, I'm going to get it done. I'm going to work with that and I'm going to support others to get the work done. So again, like they said, they're most often deemed as the MVP because you can see that their work is, is actually coming to life and they're in support of other people. And so their motto is let me help you get things done. So you can see how that is into play there. And then tenacity. So they're the natural gifts. And and again, praise the Lord for tenacious, the gift of the genius of tenacity, but their natural gift is pushing projects or tasks to completion to achieve results. They derive a great joy and energy from getting things done. And they are very much the people who bring projects across the finish line and the goal. And they are very focused on goals and results. And I think too, it's real, it's key because all of our geniuses, all of these geniuses are important, but if we're not careful, they can easily tip over into not being as healthy. And that is tenacity uh, can be, you know, they can lack empathy and patience for others because it just doesn't seem like others are working as hard because, you know, there, there's not this checklist of a, a million things that needs to get done. Which and is so it's, interesting. It's so interesting. And their motto is, Let's complete this project. Like get her done. Let's get her done. So yeah, yeah. that's the six. That's the kind of the deep dive on the six and uh, of the geniuses. So curious for our listeners, mm-hmm. you know, as they're as they're going through this, and I hope you guys do take the working genius assessment. But just as you're listening to this, you know, and you'll see us posting on Instagram and on social. Just tell us what you are. Like it would yeah. be we we genuinely want to know mm-hmm. how this is shaking out for you and your team, so that we can just you know, compare potentially and Mm -hmm. just know how they're, you know, different scenarios and different folks that are out there with different geniuses. So let's talk about the differences. Mm -hmm. How, give us some examples of the different geniuses and how they might show up in scenarios or work. Yeah. So again, once you've determined what people's geniuses are, it's, it's easy to think about a project or something that needs to get, be created and or, or, or completed, if, if, if you if, say something's already been created and you need someone to bring it to close, you're going to go want to find, you know, the, the people with the genius of tenacity, like they can really help bring this across the line if you think about the phases of implementation. And so if, you know, if you're working through a tough project, on the other hand, and we have a lot of those around here, we have to bring our galvanizers to the table to say we really need we need some energy in the, in in this work because it's maybe it's not the most sexy of work. Maybe it's a very tough project that we need. Well, we need people that can galvanize to really help our team, you know, get into a position to where we can do good work. And I think one of the you know the examples you asked me for scenarios. I think about the creation of this podcast. Yeah, and you think about our work, how we were able to leverage our collective teams genius to bring this to life and so thousand percent i am the sole inventor genius i i possess i'm the only one in the company that possesses the genius of invention and so if you think about it i was the one who said okay we something's missing from what we want to do we, we have all of this leadership lessons i've we've been going down this road we want to share it we'd been encouraged by people through the years to do this so that's kind of the wonder piece of it and then we said okay what are what is the solution to the to bringing this knowledge that we possess to life well it was the podcast mm-hmm. and so you know we had other options we could have consulted we could have done a number of things and not to suggest that we're not but at the same time it was the podcast was the solution it's you know podcast was extremely popular. We were major listeners ourselves. And so we knew that. And then it, then what we started to say was, okay, once we committed to it, then what we needed was the genius of, of discernment and galvanizing to really get us into the mode where we could actually bring this to life. And the Jordan, for instance, our, our producer, she possesses the, the genius of galvanizing and she rallied this team 
to to really bring this to life. And she, you know, we've told the story about her walking into the office and taking ownership. That's part of the genius that she possesses. I think you used your genius relative to discernment on on how we should do this and how we shouldn't. And then we had a whole team, by the way, the the Mm -hmm. genius that's most prevalent in our company, which is interesting are the the gifts of or the genius and gifts of enablement and tenacity. I mean by far over 50% of our company both all people possess in their their top 2 enablement and tenacity. So we have a lot of doers. People who want to get things done and want to support other people in doing that, which makes total sense totally. as a marketing company where collaboration is critical and key. We're lucky in in that we have been able to assemble a lot of people who like to get things done. We have a little work to do on the on the ideation, but I'm I'm probably take up a lot of that space. So, <laughs> I think the podcast is a perfect example too of us having every genius mm-hmm. in the room together to brainstorm because mm-hmm. we we did you had it you had it brought us together and we had a big brainstorm and you could see the geniuses elevating with discernment. Oh. Have you thought about this? And then you saw the galvanizers go, oh, we can create a group that does that. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? And so everybody kind of elevated. So if you can imagine yourself in your work scenario, any given work scenario, and let's say you want to have a big meeting, a brainstorm meeting. Mm-hmm. If it's a blue sky, you know, whatever goes, let's just get super creative. Why not have mm-hmm. everybody in there potentially? Or yes. actually, I take that back. You'd want to have wonder an invention in there. Absolutely. Because that's phase one. Mm-hmm. Then when you're ready to move that thing forward, once you get all the ideas in order, then you'd bring in the phase two, mm-hmm. the discerners and the galvanizers. Yes. So activation. Yep. To they're, activate. They're, 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 act, they're getting us ready to go. Take it to the next level. Yep. Then you'd have one more huddle mm-hmm. maybe with that third level of enablers and the tenacious people who these are the people who are going to lead the people to do the work that needs to get done. Correct. Yeah. And they're going to take us across the finish line and they're going to be focused on results along the way. Yeah. Gosh, that I think that if you guys can think about listeners, if you can think about it in that way from an application standpoint mm-hmm. from your own business, I'm sure you can think of different ideas where you might want to have a galvanizing meeting. Yes. People that you know are galvanizers and you know, Let's talk about this thing and then let's move. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, that's, you know, that's an applicable, but I think the working genius, and again, I know we've had our families take it and, and I've had other friends take it and it applies to personal scenarios too. I mean, think about a girl's trip. If you're planning a girl's trip with me, you want me thinking about where we could, all the possibilities of where we could go and then how are we going to, you know, what's the solution to that? Are we going to stay in a hotel? Are we going to rent a house? And then beyond that, you want me out of the way. You don't want me to be the one that's scheduling the dinners or maybe I have some ideas about where to go eat, but the the one I will not be energized by making the reservations and figuring out logistics. I know it's important and I appreciate it, but <laughs> if you want my energy put into the best way possible, it's, it's, it's not necessarily that if you think about it in another applicable uh, personal com- comment. Yeah. Common yeah. scenario. Right. So. Okay. So when you think about your report, mm-hmm. how did it shake out? <laughs> I mean, but, curious minds want to know. Yes. Yeah, so it, what, what's very interesting is that mine almost lined up exactly as the, the acronym lines up. So my That's geniuses funny. are wonder and invention, which I'm sure that everyone's de- uh, determined so that so far. And then my competencies were galvanizing and discernment. And then my f- working frustration. So it, it is uh, enablement and tenacity. And I'm sure that none of that was a surprise to anybody that works with me. No. Maybe, maybe the work competencies and frustration. Maybe. Yeah, potentially. But if you think about it, yeah, it's, uh, my geniuses are, 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 I've been able to put those to work. Yeah. Yeah. And I think one of the things that leaders can do to better define, you know, if there's any confusion between, mm-hmm. let's say galvanizing and enablement, mm-hmm. once you see the humans that elevate in different ways, you're like, okay, got it. Got it. Yep. Those behaviors are different, appreciate them, mm-hmm. very different, kind of do similar things. But, you know, motivations are completely different. Absolutely. So that's it's a good point. Yeah, yeah that's a it's, great point. It's, it's fun to watch that as a leader. So I, one of the things, thank you for sharing that about your report too. It's, mm-hmm. it was, that was really cool. And you had an 
a lot of other situations with it. There was a lot of ties, <laughs> yeah. which tells me that you're probably pretty well rounded. So then you yeah. had to figure out, you know, how, what exactly am I yes. uh, through deeper, deeper connection with yourself. So mm -hmm. what I, I do love about these reports. And so when you guys take the test, you'll all get back a report and we can put a, a, a sample report in our show notes for you. Just so yeah, you and just see. definitely, we're going to put a lot of this stuff in mm -hmm. our show notes to 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 give you the jump start you might need in terms of getting your arms around it. I, I, again, it is very easy to comprehend. Totally. This is not. I mean, the Enneagram can be a lot, and we talk about that a lot. Yeah. It, that's that's a little bit a lot heavier lifting than this. Totally. Yeah. But something that's fun mm -hmm. in the report okay. is how the table group describes, they say what people with the genius of X tend to think and say. So I thought it would be fun if we talked about your genius, <laughs> what people with the genius of wonder tend to think and say to themselves. Okay. And it's things like that you say, <laughs> such as, couldn't this be better? Yeah. Okay. Or, um, maybe we should think about this a little bit more. Like, let's keep going, you know, like let's, we're not, I don't want to say you can't be satisfied. That is not true. Um, but you can, it's just, you kind of want to go a little bit deeper to push it a little bit further. Let's wonder a little bit more bigger. Yes. So I love that about wonder. And then it also in the report, it says what others think and what others think and say. So what I just said was things that you might think okay. about yourself, but then they also say what others <laughs> might think or observe <laughs> about people with wonder. And I thought these were kind of funny. So examples are, she's always asking why and why not. Mm -hmm. Okay. True. Then she's a deeper thinker than, you know, I think that one's interesting mm -hmm. because I guess it's because you're all up here maybe with wondering. And so then, that's not deep, but actually it really is. And then, uh-oh, she's dreaming <laughs> off again, which I think is probably your classic. Like, oh, here we go. It's like, a here comes a creative idea. Let's all brace. Brace for impact. Brace for impact. Yeah. And it, not because it's a bad thing. It's an awesome thing, but the discerners know right away. Right. And then the, the, the folks that are in implementation mode going, we have really got to get going. We don't need three more ideas yeah. or three, yeah. you know, we don't need you to think on this anymore yes. in this particular like instance. We got yeah. It. Yes. Love it. Okay. And so then for me, I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum because enablement was your least. No, no, no. Tenacious. Tenacity. Tenacity. But yeah. it was the second. Yes. Okay. Second to last. It second was to last. Frustration. It was in my working frustration. Okay. Correct. Where enablement is my number one. It's okay. my working genius. So what people with this genius of enablement tend to think and say, and just so think about the differences between what I just said about wonder and now what I'm going to say about enablement. I've heard enough. I'm in. <laughs> so kind of like cut to the chase. Let's go. Yes. Let's move forward. This is exciting. Sign me up. Let me know how I can help. Yeah. These are the things that you would say this to yourself. What I would say. Yeah. Yes. I, I see that hundred percent. Then yeah. what others might say about someone with an enablement genius are things like, she's the best team player we have. So why is that? Because I'm going to help you. That's right. I'm going to play with you. We're going to mm -hmm. move this thing forward. I'm going to write what you need me to write. I'm going to do what you need me to do, whatever. I'm make sure we're going to get across that line. That's why you're the, like the MVP. Yeah. That's why, that's why they said this about this particular genius, which makes total sense. Total sense. Yeah. And then I love this one. Make sure she understands what she's getting into. That's what other people might say about someone with enablement because we say yes to everything. <laughs> Correct. No is a hard, no is a hard word. And so maybe that's why we get along so well as you, I know. Yeah. Well, you've learned to tell me no through the years, yeah. but. I you have. do it in a very well, a diplomat, a very diplomatic way right. because your second genius is, is discernment. discernment, which is so weird. It's yeah. like enablement's number one. And then discernment is like, Oh, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> you know, like Debbie Downer comes in. Well, it's not always no, no, it's not. Yeah. But it's like, well, let's, let's think, think about, about this. this more. Let's think about yeah. this a little bit let's deeper. Let's pick this apart a little bit more. So, yeah. so listeners, you can imagine, you know, you listen to yourself mm -hmm you know, listen to your instinctual self and like, what are you thinking during meetings? What do you typically find yourself saying? Do you see yourself in any of this? You mm -hmm. definitely should mm -hmm. because everyone has a working genius. So well, we have all six. It's just how they're the ranked, how they're ranked is what, where the, the light, the, the light bulb moment comes up. Yeah. And it, it's, again, it's a, it's, it's validating in many ways, yeah. but it's also enlightening too. It is. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen for emotional intelligence, yep. knowing why I feel a certain way when I feel a certain way, whether that's good or bad mm -hmm. helps me in that moment. It helps me navigate the moment better and smarter. And then guess what? When you do it as an organization, you build an empathy. 
Correct. Oh, she's probably miserable right now. You know, like, <laughs> oh boy, this is hard. Yeah, you we know, asked Anel to do three things today. We know that's <laughs> <laughs> we, we know that's going to be super hard. So let's support her in that. But, says the enabler. Yes. All right. So I think we've talked a little bit about how to apply this from a leadership perspective, mm-hmm. but when leaders do finally get this intelligence yes. about their teams, how could they, how might they use it? Okay. So what we did is we all took the test okay. and then they have, in, they have incredible tools on the website. Yeah. So they have a easy PDF map that you can go in and put everyone's uh, working genius and their frustrations. We created our own, I don't know, kind of a grid. grid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. We created a grid so that everyone could see where we la- lined out. And then we, we had discussion, open discussion about it. And there's, again, there's plenty of exercises that you can go through, but I, I think again, it's for our team. I wouldn't say if you're ranking the, assessments or tests that we use at our Mm -hmm. company the enneagram is just such a big part of 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 our organization of our dna yeah but the working genius it 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 sits over here and it's it's relative to new projects or when we need we know something is missing and so for instance i i i hear you all say now we need you to come to this particular meeting because we need you to think, help us think through X, Y, Z. Yes. And so we're, we're not as intentional. Maybe we might not say we need your invention right now, right. but because you know that about me and you know what brings me joy and energy, you know, when to include me Yes. and the, the, the to the contrary is, okay, Danelle, we're getting to the part of the meeting where we're getting into the Tactical. The tactical piece. Mm-hmm. You, you may be excused or you may stay. Yeah. Like it's up to, up to you. you. Yeah. That's what the benefit of having your name on the door. But anyway, I usually <laughs> leave <laughs> and so that, that I can allow them to do what brings them joy and energy. So again, it's, it's one of those things of once you know it and you understand it, you start to see it, you see it immediately. And then you can start to apply it um, relative to particular projects and or again, whatever is necessary for the work to be done. And then ob- obviously it works the same way in your personal life mm-hmm. as well. So when you know these things. So what can our listeners do? What should they do immediately? What's your advice to them? As well, they- if you're interested in it, I mean, first of all, obviously take the test yourself. I mean, again, you get the results immediately and I, I love that and test is completely affordable. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, really organize your thoughts around it and then determine if this is right for your team and it's something that you can implement. I would highly recommend if, you know, if you, if, if your genius is wonder and invention that you might invite some people on the implement implementation side to help you bring this to life. Um, but yeah, have your test, take it, map out the results. And then there's now there wasn't so much when we started this, mm-hmm. but now that I've been brushing up on the resources that are out there. there's tons of videos and okay. then Patrick Lencioni and his team are just releasing a book on the working genius. So we have plenty, there are plenty of resources for leaders out there who decide that this could be a, a, a great tool. What, what it did for us too, we did it at a retreat. Well, we had everyone in the company prior to a retreat, take the test. And then I presented the results and then we had some exercises around it so that we could get it basically implemented quicker into our organization. And, and that's, you know, that's would be my advice to Look how at people you being go forward. Tenacious. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> I have to be, I can be tenacious. Yes, I just have can. to be very conscious about it. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you. That, that was super helpful. Working genius. Definitely give it a whirl. Let's ship shift over to music moment. And right. you know what? We're kind of bookending with sad things. Yeah, we, I, I didn't realize that. Until yeah, just this minute. Because I told Meg, don't, she usually comes up with, well, I guess we share the ideas yeah. on music moments. But uh, we uh, decided to honor one of our, uh, I don't know, influential music Gosh, yeah. legends. So with the passing of Olivia Newton-John and right. both of us in our, well, one of us 80s, still in our 40s. 70s children. 70s children. 80s children. And uh, so that was a. That's, so sad. She had such a. A big influence, I uh, know, definitely on you. So. Yeah, I want to say, I, w- I told Danelle this, so when she passed away, my mother texted me immediately, and she was like, Olivia Newton-John died today. Like, are you okay? 
Um, <laughs> because when I was about three, I loved Greece. Oh yeah. I saw Greece. I think everyone in my family took me to see it multiple times because I just, I, I love the music of course, but she was exceptionally, you know, I wanted to be her when I grew up. And then she was my first in-person concert. And I remember my mom, it was the physical tour. Mm -hmm. Do y'all remember? Let's get, get physical. physical. Is it cool? Yeah. Yep. And Santa Claus brought me that um, album for Christmas one year. And I mean, I lost it. It was so, I'm so excited. The fact that you went to go see Greece so many times as a child, <laughs> I may have to circle back with your mom on that. But yeah, I did too. I watched it too. And if now, oh, I, uh, whoa. Gross. Yeah. It's a little suggestive, but it, it's like, I don't. Nobody knew. Nobody All knew. the things that we were saying in Grease Lightning. So if she was your hero, like, was it the Sandy and the cheerleader outfit or the one in the both. black leather both i did i felt like she was that was one of the first honestly that was one of the first female empowerment moments that i can recollect she i'm sure like, i had oh, others yeah. besides dolly parton to me but it was a different kind yeah and then when she oh yeah i can remember i can probably sing that entire soundtrack Same. still to Let's this get day going. number no, one no, no. No. <laughs> Let's get you started. Imagine, could you imagine? <laughs> yes. But anyway, what a, yeah, yeah she had a, such an influential oh, yeah. career and, um, yeah, and went too soon. She was so young. Way too soon. Yeah. And just such a good person and yeah. had f battled cancer for a long time this last round and then mm -hmm. had battled it, had beat it mm -hmm. before. So it was, um, sad to see her go. She was always a very happy, positive, yeah, seemingly. optimistic, mm -hmm. probably a nine or a three. <laughs> Um, on the Enneagram. And so, yeah, huge inspiration to me. So rest in peace, Miss Olivia Newton-John. We will miss you. Absolutely. We'll never watch Grease the same. No, we won't. Mm -mm. Or sing the songs. And rest in peace, Miss Shelby Ray. Oh, thank you. My family appreciates it. Yeah. Okay. We appreciate her and we appreciate you. Mm. All right. Remember, listeners, gosh, we really are just boo-hoo. I need the Kleenex. <laughs> I need the Kleenex now. Well, if you're going to be so smart, you got to. You got to get into it. Yeah. Right? Got to get into it. So, um, listeners, thank you for being vulnerable with us. Thank you for letting us share what's on our hearts and minds this week. We will put all of our notes, diligent notes, in the show notes, which are on the website. Yes. And until next week, we send you into the week with grateful hearts. Goodbye, everyone. As always, you can connect with us on Instagram and Facebook at Self Smarter Podcasts. You can also leave a rating or review if you enjoyed what you heard today. Not only does this mean so much to us, but it also helps other leaders and future leaders find our community. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join us in becoming Self Smarter. This podcast is produced by Snacks Media and music is from a free platform. Well, that is until Brandy Carlisle reaches out to us to write the original score for our podcast. Friends, have a great rest of your day.